I made the braces the day before using 2x8 red cedar. I laid out and cut a plywood pattern according to the plans. I traced the pattern then cut opposing 45 degree angles on the miter saw. This ensures the brace will be 90 degrees. I cut the curved sections on the bandsaw. I sand this cut smooth with a small hobby belt sander. The flexible sanding belt follows the curve of the brace quite well. The braces will be attached to the shed posts and beams with a long lag bolt at a 20 degree angle. This will help pull the brace tightly into the corner. I tilt the table of my drill press to this angle. Mark the hole center and clamp some simple stops to the table to hold the pieces in place. A countersink with a Forstner bit drops the head of the bolt neatly below the surface. Then I switch bits to drill the pilot hole for the shank of the lag bolt. Using my angle grinder with a sanding disc, I bevel the edges of each corner brace, except the edge that mates with a post, girt, or beam. So all the outside edges. You can see here I've made a few extra braces for my next project as well. I mark the post and beam one inch in from the outside edge to guide the brace location. I hold it securely in place and drill into the post and beam. And drive in a lag bolt with an impact driver. For this project, this simple brace is more than enough to give the structure rigidity. A brace with a proper tendon that is mortised into the post and beam is always the best option, 
But for this small woodshed, I think a flat mounted brace with a long angled lag bolt is enough. On the other side of the shed, I'll attach the girts to the posts in the same fashion. I countersink and secure the lower girts to the posts with lag bolts. Then attach the corner braces. At this point, I'll apply two coats of a semi-transparent stain with a small roller. This green color will match the paint on the house. It's easier to stain the frame now than later when the roof and walls are on. I try to pre-stain as much as possible or when it's convenient. Now I'll select the long front and rear beams and cut them to length. They are a bit too big for my miter saw stand so I'll cut them with a circular saw. I mark all four sides with a square, make four cuts, then finish off the middle with a handsaw. The beams have a quarter ellipse profile cut into the ends. I laid out this pattern on thin plywood and trace it onto both sides of the beams at each end. I measure the distance between the posts and transfer these dimensions to the beams. I want these beams to sit down on the post by an inch. I'll cut these wide grooves with my circular saw and clean them up with a chisel. I think this looks better than simply attaching the beams to the posts on the flat, and it prevents the posts from twisting and the structure from racking. And sometimes you run into a knot and it just takes a bit longer to clean up the slot. I bought a new jigsaw specifically to cut these end profiles on the beams. 
Some research led me to the Bosch with its 7 amp motor and its sturdy guide that helps prevent the blade from wandering. I also bought some long blades that will cut at least 6 inches deep. I've done a complete review and video on this jigsaw, so check the links in the description below. These blades are fairly wide, so I wasn't sure if I could cut the sharp elliptical radius. I decided to start from the end and work my way in and try to keep to the line as best I could. The vibration moved the beam on the sawhorses, so I had to stop and weigh them down. I was happy with the result and I only had a small degree of wander or push off. As before, I'll chamfer the edges with a power plane and angle grinder. The beams attach to the posts with a long lag bolt. I'll countersink the head with a Forstner bit. Then drill a pilot hole straight and square with a drill guide. Then finish with a bit slightly smaller than the bolt's shank. Now I'll stain these beams and let dry. To place the beams, I enlisted the help of my wife Marilyn. It's definitely a two-person job. Red cedar is not a heavy wood, but too awkward to do this safely single-handed. The rear beam fell into place easily. The front beam was tight, so I tapped it in with a hammer. Thanks, Marilyn. I drill into the post with a long bit then secure the beam with a big lag bolt. Next I'll attach the braces to the posts and beams.
Now I can remove the temporary bracing. The back wall of the shed has two vertical 4x4s to add additional support to hold the weight of the stacked firewood. These are cut to length, screwed into the saddles, plumbed, and then secured to the rear beam with screws. Across the back will be a pair of horizontal 2x6s. The front doorway is made from 4x4s and installed same as the back wall, except they will have slots cut in to accept the front cross members. These front cross members are similar to the side girts, except they're shorter. I countersink and drill the ends, then tap this into place. Then drill into the posts and run in some lag bolts. I'll hand tighten the last few turns with a socket wrench so I don't strip out the wood or break a bolt. The doorway header is cut to length on the miter saw, then the curve is copied from a brace and cut on the bandsaw. It's toe screwed into place. Thank you for watching part two of this project. This is Kent from Man About Tools. If you like what you see on our channel, give us a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't done so already.